How's it going, folks? Sauber here? That is right. That is the M1 Abrams you see here. It is finally coming to War Thunder. When I saw the dev blog for the Challenger 1 earlier in February, I just knew the Abrams was going to be next. And even though they announced, I think it was the T64B afterward, I still knew. We're getting the Abrams regardless. If not the Abrams, at least the XM1, which was one of the prototypes to the M1 Abrams. But yeah, I cannot believe we're actually getting this in the game. And a lot of people are wondering, how is Gaijin going to add accurately add in the armor models? Like, Because composite armor is very complex. Put it in simple terms like, on the T64A, for example, and we're about to switch to the gameplay in just a moment, uh, on the T64A, on the top layer, it's rolled homogeneous armor. Through the middle layer, it's, uh, oh my goodness, I forget what the material's called. I'm not looking at it right now. But there's a special kind of mater strong material in the middle of that, then another, and then another, until finally you get, again, another layer of rolled homogeneous armor. So that's pretty complex stuff. And a type of armor that the, not just the M1 Abrams, but all the original Abrams, I don't know about succeeding versions like the M1A1 or M1A2 or M1A2 SEP, but the Challenger 1 use Chobum armor. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And this is what makes me very curious as to, well, how is Gaijin going to model it? Because for those of you that don't know, Chobham armor is classified. Top secret. That's right. Not generally available to the public. Chobham armor is still used in... Although the Challenger 1 was retired in 1980... Or, excuse me, 1998, the Challenger 2, which succeeded it... Oh, I just realized. The Challenger 2 went into service in 98, and the Challenger 1 was retired in, I believe, 2001 by the Royal British Royal Army? But nonetheless, the Challenger 2 also uses Chobham armor, most likely of a different uh, setup compared to the original, likely an improved version. But nonetheless, how is Gaijin going to model it? I guess we'll see. Dev as of the making of this time of the making of this video, February 6, 2018, there hasn't been a dev server up, so we'll just have to wait and see how it's modeled. I'm really curious as to how that'll work. But anyhow, you might be wondering, am I playing the Abrams? No. This is the Abrams' older brother, the MBT-70. As I might have covered in one of my previous videos, the MBT-70 and KPZ-70 was part of a joint uh, tank development program between the United States and the Federal Republic of Germany, aka West Germany, in the 1970s, to come up with a new main battle tank to replace the Leopard, or excuse me, the M48 Patton and Leopard 1 tanks used by the Americans and Germans, respectively. But unfortunately, neither tank went into full mass serious production with only 14 prototypes built, seven for each nation, and for various reasons, including the following but not limited to, its odd construction design, which like for example, all three crew members, gunner, commander, and driver, all sit in the turret, not the hull. So it's pretty odd, so if imagine you're the driver, and as you see here, my turret's pointing to the right, and you feel like you're moving to the left, but through your sight, which is not properly modeled in the game, which would always stay straight forward on the hull. In other words, like even though my turret is now is turned, let's say, to the right, one of those sights, I can't remember which one, if it's the one on the right or the middle, will stay straight. However, in War Thunder that is not modeled. And it would also and crew comfort, which unlike in a video game, in real life is very somewhat well, it's very important because sure, it's not always supposed to be comfortable riding in such a bulky vehicle that's going up and down, up and down on hard terrain, the crew can't be like jottling, or jottling, if that's even a word, jolting up and down to the point where they feel motion sickness. 
And plus the odd configuration of the 20 millimeter cannon, which is mounted on the left side of the tank. That and many other problems, as well as the project becoming far too expensive, made the vehicle impractical for mass production. So the project was dropped. Then, afterwards, in the 1970s, when it was agreed that, when both sides agreed that the MBT-70 just wasn't going to make the cut, they started moving on to different projects. Germans started working on various Leopard 2 prototypes designs. One of them, the Leopard 2K, were getting in War Thunder, which retained a similar 20 millimeter that was, or I said that backwards, which maintained the use of a 20 millimeter, which was similar to the one used on the KPZ-70. I don't know too much about the Leopard 2K, but apparently it was one of many prototypes that later was adapted into the Leopard 2 battle tank. Leopard 2K, from what I've seen in the devlog pictures, kind of looks like a moder uh, excuse me, a modified Leopard 1A4 with a 120 millimeter cannon as opposed to the 105 millimeter L7. And in addition, it also has a 20 millimeter on the roof. But ironically, less smoke grenades. It has eight instead of 16, which would later be used on the Leopard 2 production model. Anyhow, in the United States, starting in the 1970s, and just to get there, I'm reading some of this from the War Thunder devlog. Once the unsuccessful joint German-American MPT-70 project had been shut down in 1971, the Congress re redistributed funds to further development of the XM815 project. That's the one I was thinking of. Later known as the M1 Abrams. The development of the XM1 Abrams, which... To deviate a little, I was honestly expecting in the game, because M1, even the original model, is a pretty tough nut to crack. But I didn't know it was just suitable enough to be added to War Thunder. Anyhow, the development of the XM1 Abrams was a competition between the two designs of Chrysler and General Motors companies, respectively. Early July 1973 marks an important date for the project after representatives of both companies traveled to Great Britain to witness the development of the new composite, composite armor named Burlington, not the Coat Factory. <laughs> Impressed by what they saw, both companies decide to reevaluate and optimize their design's armor layout to increase its effectiveness. With General Motors cha changing the front shape of the turret to a sloped surface, whilst Chrysler retains its vertical design. By 1976, the XM1 prototypes were being readied for testing, with the finishing touch being the installation of the M68 cannon, which as for some of you may know, is used on the M60 tanks, as well as the M48A5, which unfortunately is not in the game, but a similar Israeli variant, oh my goodness, I forgot what it's called, is going to be added as a Tier 5 premium. Going back to the devlog, testing of both prototypes took place in the presence of the new German Leopard 2 tank, which was shipped for the US for comparison purposes. Once testing was concluded and the results evaluated, the turbine-powered Chrysler design was proclaimed the winner of the competition, and thus Chrysler design, the Chrysler design would soon enter production as the M1 Abrams. The M1 production entered production in 1979, with the first production version, M1, leaving the factory floor in February of 1980. Production of the M1 continued until 1985 with an improved M1 IP version being produced briefly between 1984 and 1986. By 1985, several thousands of M1s had already begun, excuse me, had already been manufactured and put into service. In August 1985, for however, before I continue this, I didn't read all of the dev blog, I usually don't, but when I was watching Fly Daily's video on the M1 Abrams, thank you so much, Fly, for pointing this out, because I completely missed this. This is, Something that's really, I think, is really significant to the development of the Abrams in War Thunder. And here's why. The M1 was outfitted with the license-built version of the Rheinmann Toll 120mm gun, as found on the Leopard 2 tank, and subsequently entered production as the M1A1 Abrams, which 
was the most common variant that fought in kuwait in the in the operation desert storm operation against iraq for their invasion of kuwait earlier m1 units would progressive lee be upgraded to the m1 a1 standard but this is a story for another death blog in the future now what does that say or what does that tell you could we get the m1 a1 in the future basically the original that is the original m because the m1 a1 has really really tough armor even by war thunder standards so it's most likely assuming we do get the m1 a1 it'll basically be an original m1 upgraded with the 120 millimeter cannon which would be nice nonetheless and to conclude the death blog it reads as follows the M1 Abrams saw the most active service with U.S. forces primarily in the operations in the Middle East, but known operators also include Australia, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and others. Nonetheless, the American M1 Abrams is one of the most successful and widely fielded modern-day MBTs in use anywhere in the world, and rightfully deserves its iconic status alongside other American legends such as the M4 Sherman and M60 Patton, to name a few. The fact that the M1 Abrams is still being manufactured and used today, for almost four decades after its introduction, serves as a testimony to that statement. So that's pretty much it. I'm not going to read all of the devlog, because the rest is just a description of War Thunder. But it's going to be pretty exciting to see what the M1 brings to the table. And the other thing I wanted to mention briefly is, since it's getting... Uh, the M68A1 cannon, which I don't know, I guess they forgot to specify it's an A1, not the original M68 cannon. The M68A1 is an improved variation of the original M68. And basically, what ammo will it get? For example, the. Where'd it go? M728 APDS which I believe is used on the M60A1 in-game, has a penetration of 300 millimeters of armor at 90 degrees at about 500 meters distance. So, which uh, APFS, and that's just regular APDS. So what for form of APFS DS shell will the Abrams get? For example, I took this one source from uh, uh, Napalm Rate, thanks for uh, providing this source when I watched his video on the M1 Abrams Realistic Expectations, which I will link both videos, both Flies and Napalms, in the description below. And that is this, uh, of a number of possible shells we could get, the, the APFSDS shells as listed on Napalm's video. M735, 410 millimeters at 500 mi meters, which is slightly better than the Chieftain Mark 10's APFSDS. APFSDS standing for Armor Piercing Fence Stabilized, discarding Sabre. Another possible contender is the M774 at 440 at 500 meters, or 440 millimeters at 500 meters. And then the latter two, it's either one or the other, I don't know, maybe both, but the M833 shell, 490 millimeters at 500 meters away, and then the one I personally would like to see, although it would probably be ridiculously overpowered, but hey, it'd be kind of helpful, is the M900, which is an, a depleted uranium shot. I'm not going to explain uh, what depleted uranium is, as Napalm explains it ex excellently, so I'll refer you to his video for that explanation. But the M900, brace yourself, it penetrates 650 millimeters of armor at 500 meters. Think about that. The toughest tank in War Thunder, in terms of full frontal armor, as of 1.75, in my opinion, is the T95. Not the E1, but the tank destroyer, T95, 
with 305 millimeters of armor at, at the front at 90, I think 90 degrees ish. Don't quote me on that. But that's already pretty tough in itself, and sure, it can get tanned by some other tanks, but 650? That's a lot. I mean, that's even more than the SS 11 ATGM missile that's featured on the Rocky 10 Jagdpanzer, the STRV 81, and the AMX 13 SS 11. That is pretty powerful shell. Will we get that? I don't know. If we do, it would probably be like a tier 4 modification, or I wouldn't be surprised if we would be limited to carrying it, kind of like you are limited with ATGMs you can carry on some vehicles. And last but certainly not least, one thing I wanted to speculate a bit for 1.77 is, are we going to get new maps? Like, if we would, I'm not saying we are, because I don't know, but if we do get a new map, because you, we usually get two new maps on average per update. I mean, that's not always the case, but generally that's an average. Like, for example, when 1.71 uh, with the Tier 6 tanks came out, it was two maps. Folda Gap on the German-German border, that is, the border between East and West, and the Japan map, formerly known as the Emperor's Garden. Those were two nice maps, but what new maps could we expect in 1.77, if any? Could we expect, like, a Berlin Wall map? Which I highly doubt. Perhaps a, um, a new desert map, like something based on Kuwait? Considering Kuwait or Iraq, considering that both the M1 and Challenger 1 fought there together. Of any maps that they might possibly add, I think that would be the most reasonable and realistic expectation. But we'll just have to wait and see future dev blogs and or the upcoming dev server. I have no ETA on when the dev server will come. I just hope it's not on a weekday because I work. And I'd like to have, within all reason, as much time as possible to experience the new stuff before it comes out. What's another possible map? Well, that's a good question. I had one in my mind and then my mind just <laughs> but it's going to be interesting to see what 1.77 will bring to the table. And one thing I totally forgot to mention is new graphics. Yeah, Dacker 5.0 gaming engine, which, fun fact, is Gaijin's very own gaming engine. I don't know too much info about it, but it's made in-house and they've upgraded it continuously since Dacker 3.0 which was, if I recall correctly, the first engine to be used in War Thunder. I remember when Dakar 4.0 came out, and I was like real worried, oh, it's going to be too demanding on my old gaming PC, but thankfully it wasn't that bad. I think it was only like a 10, maybe 15 FPS drop, which in total reduced it to about 30 to 45, but that's a story for another day. Anyhow, and now we're getting Dakar 5.0. If you haven't seen so already, just take a look on War Thunder's website for the Dakar 5.0 engine preview. It is fantastic. And then in the next video, I might elaborate and focus more on the graphics. But as of now, we are almost out of time. But one last final food for thought is when could we expect Tier 6 Air Forces? Because in one of the Thunder Show episodes, they kind of hinted about it. That they're testing the heck out of Tier 6 to make it interesting and fair and balanced. Paraphrased, by the way. So, in short, what can we expect? We'll just have to wait and see. But until next time, have a great day. Peace out.